track days, test and tunes, autocross. You know them, you love them. They are the perfect way to put your driving skills to the test and also a great way to test the capabilities of your sports car. So it's time to hit the tarmac and you certainly can't show up in your mom's Honda Odyssey. You need something purpose-built for surviving the abuse of a track day. Something that is sure to crush your competition. What's up guys, I'm the Squid, this is Ideal Cars, and I'm about to give you a list of cars that can take you to the track day for under 10,000 bucks. Let's go. Now what do we mean by track day? There are a million ways to go racing with your car. You can go hit the drag strip to race for pinks, Go to a private track day at your local racetrack, or if you're into rallycross, you just need a dirt road. No matter what you're doing, the first car on this list is honestly one of the best options out there for a track day car right now. And it's even one of the best value enthusiast cars in general today. What are the requirements for a great track day car? Lightweight, plenty of power, lots of aftermarket support, and it definitely helps to have a community that can help you build your car into your dream car. And the one car that fits all of those and more is the Nissan 350Z. Now we've been talking about the 350Z here on Ideal for a while. It's in like every one of our lists and there is a good reason for that. This V6 rear wheel drive coupe has been around for a good amount of time and there is a community around this car unlike most other cars on the market today. People really love the Nissan Z and the 350Z is pretty much the Swiss army knife of the car world. Time attack, drag racing, drifting, rally, club racing. It does it all, man. And a lot of that usability comes down to that VQ V6 under the hood. Its approachable demeanor means that you can tune that thing to the moon. It only takes a few mods to push it upwards of 400 horsepower. Anything beyond that, the sky's the limit. It's just all about how much you believe in yourself and how much money you have. Just uh, don't overextend yourself too quickly in terms of power on this thing. Get good on the track without the turbo first, then decide if you want to turbo it and maybe blow that motor. Now the best part about the Nissan 350Z is right now, their price is incredible. We found one for under 6,000 bucks with under 100,000 miles that looks freaking perfect. I mean, it's pretty, but it doesn't matter if you're making a track car out of this because you're going to trash it anyway. Now, if a big, fat V6-powered Z is not exactly what you're looking for for your track day, you might want something a little more sorted and a little more balanced. And for that, you're going to want to consider the car that's always the answer, the NC Miata. Working here at Ideal Cars, I get asked almost daily, what car should I buy as a high schooler who wants to have a little bit of fun but also daily drive it every day? And my answer is always the same. It's Miata. I know, it's the answer everyone expects. It's not the most original answer in the world, but you expect it because it's good. There's a reason Mazda has sold over a million of these little cars. They're fantastic and people love them. Just like the 350Z, all of the elements for a great track day car are here in the Miata. Rear wheel drive, front engine, two doors, and a ton of tuning potential. Plus, bonus, you can drop the top in it. Weight savings. Just, uh, you know, invest in a roll bar before you really decide to hit the track. Now, unlike the 350Z, the engine in the Miata is not a fire-breathing monster, but it's plenty of power for how lightweight the Miata is. With a bit of work, you can push that naturally aspirated four-cylinder up to around 225 horsepower, which again, doesn't sound like a lot, but when you drive a Miata with 225 horsepower, you're gonna realize you have plenty of power to get you to whatever you wanna be doing. If that isn't enough power, good news, you can also add force induction to a Miata and make it a hell of a lot of fun. All this horsepower talk does not get at what makes the Miata really special. The Miata is not about horsepower. Having owned one, I can tell you right now, you're never thinking about horsepower while you're driving a Miata through some tight turns. All you're thinking about is how perfectly it handles. It's fun, it's approachable, and that low level of power means that you never really get into a situation you can't get out of. This is basically an adult go-kart. And Miatas are so well known for their racing performance that entire club events have been dedicated solely to the MX-5. So pretty much no matter where you live, if you live near a racetrack, you can find another group of MX-5 enthusiasts and hit the track with them. And if you were crazy enough to add enough horsepower to your Miata, you could probably pretty easily take it to a drift event and keep up with some of the faster cars pretty handily. Now, prices for a Miata are gonna vary wildly. If somebody has one and doesn't know what they've got, they're selling it for three grand. If somebody has one and knows what they got, they're selling it for 15 grand. Luckily, we were able to find a beautiful NC edition Miata for less than nine grand, which means we're about $1,000 under budget so you can buy that roll bar so you can hit the track with it as soon as possible. 
All right, so maybe you don't want to bring a Barbie car to a track day. I don't blame you. What if I told you you could pay less money, go faster, and the only thing you have to sacrifice is rear wheel drive? Ladies and gentlemen, the Civic SI. Yeah, the Honda Civic, the staple of every high schooler who needs to be louder than they are fast, and who just absolutely has to annoy as many neighbors as possible. But if you can get past all that stigma, the Honda Civic SI is actually kind of amazing. See, the Honda Civic has long been a staple of cheap, fun, and fast cars. There are few other cars on the marketplace that can balance all of those qualities together, quite like the Civic does. Now, it being a front-wheel drive four-cylinder means it's not gonna blow the doors or the minds of anyone around you, but sitting behind the wheel, you're gonna respect what the Civic Si is capable of. The base model Civic Si already comes with 200 horsepower, and just like with the Miata, this is a very lightweight car, so that's a lot of horsepower per ton. It's not just all about the power. A Honda Civic Si is a fantastic driving platform. It handles beautifully meaning this is a stable, fun platform for an autocross or a track day, or if you really want to blow some minds and spend some real money under the hood, you can make this thing a drag racing monster. And the K-Series engine that we're talking about in this generation of Civic Si is legendary. It's one of the best four-cylinder motors of all time. And if you want to see other legendary four-cylinders, check out this video up here. There is a near unlimited amount of aftermarket support for the K-Series engine. And right now, the 9th gen Civic Si is an amazing value. We were able to find this low mileage example for around nine grand. But those of you on more of a tight budget could consider getting a higher mileage Civic Si because it's a freaking Honda. High mileage is not really a problem. Now, if you're not looking for something super reliable, but you still want a ton of fun, you might want to consider the Chevy Cobalt SS. Sure, when you're thinking of amazing front-wheel drive tuner cars, pretty much everyone assumes you're talking about the Honda Civic. But like Master Yoda said, There is another. That's right, we're leaving the land of Japan, and we're talking about an American-made front-wheel drive coupe. When you think about the United States of America, you think about V8s, rear-wheel drive, <laughs> and hamburgers. The Chevy Cobalt SS isn't the first cheap front-wheel drive economy car to come from the big three, but it is definitely one of the best. Debuting in 2004, the Cobalt was Chevy's answer to the JDM rivals. And they really came out swinging. This is one hell of a car. And what makes it really special? Well, it's still American at heart. It's supercharged and comes with 260 horsepower from the factory. This ain't no slouch. And the aftermarket support for the Cobalt SS means it's really tunable, but it's not just about horsepower. The chassis design of the Cobalt SS means it's actually pretty nimble too. Now where the Cobalt SS is really gonna shine is a time attack or a hill climb or one of those other quirky off-brand kind of racing events because it's a ton of horsepower in a front wheel drive platform and it's gonna need a lot of work to stay kind of competitive in terms of like proper racing. Luckily though, it's an insanely cheap car so you can afford to make those modifications. We were able to find one for around $7,000. And since you're using the ideal car strategies to buy yours, you're gonna know that these are probably going up in value over the next few years so you could make some money while racing, which is more than we can say for most Formula One teams. Now, sure, racing on the pavement and asphalt is all well and good, but there's a whole wide world of snow, gravel, and dirt out there that you want to get your tires in. And you know what we're about to talk about. You want maximum control in the least controllable environment? You want the Subaru WRX. Sanctioned rally racing has given us some of the greatest cars ever made. Lancias, Audis, Mitsubishi Evos. But the one car that has stood the test of time through all of it is the WRX. Coming straight out of the factory with 250 plus horsepower to play with. And just about the biggest aftermarket community in the world means you're looking down the barrel of 300 horsepower, all wheel drive fun in a matter of no time. And it's all under control thanks to Subaru's symmetrical all wheel drive system. Perfect for keeping you planted in corners, whether you're on dirt, Asphalt, tarmac, snow, driving through a bunch of jello. I don't know. It's your car, do whatever you want with it. Meaning the WRX is a performer at track days, time attack, rally cross, autocross, or even drag racing. What's the catch? Well, you're gonna struggle to find one underneath our 10K budget. 
Not saying it's impossible. For example, you could get a stink eye like this one for 12,000 bucks, negotiate it down a bit, maybe get it closer to 10. You know, maybe sell your old PlayStation to afford the difference. And it's gonna be worth it because you've got an out of the box, powerful, fun track monster. Now, maybe you need a track day car that isn't just built for the track days, but would be nice to drive on your time off. Maybe something with a little class, a little sophistication, and a really expensive badge on the hood. Well, then you may want what is called the Gentleman's Racer, the Porsche Boxster. And I, I know what you're thinking. Porsche is not the first name that comes to mind when I'm thinking of cheap cars. Sure, well-tuned, well-handling, very refined, sure, but not cheap. Well, the Porsche Boxster is here to tell you that you're wrong because the Porsche Boxster is a fantastic car for the money. It's rear wheel drive. It's mid-engine and a chassis design that is just insanely easy to control, meaning it'll outhandle most cars in its class and its price range with ease. One major drawback for the Boxster though is, is there's not as much aftermarket support. So weight reduction is kind of going to be your best friend here, which is nice because that's the cheapest mod of all. Just remove stuff from the car to go faster. And like the Miata, the Porsche Boxster has its own racing club dedicated to it, meaning you have plenty of competition out there at your local track day, which is the best way to hone your skills as a driver, going door to door with other drivers of the same car. And good news, you can drive this awesome piece of German automotive engineering for only 8,000 bucks. So whether you're building a track day car or not, this is just a great deal of a car. Now let's go from the most refined car on this list to the least refined car on this list. Up next, I'm talking about the Fox Body Mustang, which if you don't know what Fox Body means, it's the code for the 1980s style bodied Mustang. And it's right now probably one of the best deals in performance cars. With older Mustangs fetching a pretty penny and newer Mustangs still being too expensive to afford, right now the 80s Mustangs are just starting to reappreciate. So if this interests you, Get in while you can. Get yourself a Fox Body Mustang, throw a few bolt-ons on it, and get 400 horsepower with ease. Now, those of you in the know know that a Mustang doesn't mean that you're gonna exactly be carving up the corners too soon. So maybe consider this mostly if you're into drag racing or just making a ton of horsepower. But one thing to consider as well is that these are really popular in the drifting world. The combination of a ton of horsepower and a short wheelbase means that this thing is actually pretty good at sliding through a corner and putting out a lot of smoke. And where the Fox Body Mustang really shines is in its price tag. We were able to find a Fox Body GT for around three grand. Sure, it's a little bit ratty, but for a track day car, that is absolutely perfect. That's so much money left over for activities. Maybe a big shouty V8 drag racer is not what you're looking for. Maybe you want to consider what is called the best front wheel drive car of all time, the Honda DC2, or as we here in the States call it, the Acura Integra. Now, sadly, we're not talking about the Type R. That's the one everyone wants. They're like $50,000. It's crazy. Luckily, the lower trim Integras are still fantastic and are a fraction of the price, with the GSR trim being the one that catches the most attention from us. It comes out of the box with 170 horsepower, but everyone that knows Hondas knows that that's only just the start. You can push these engines to numbers damn near 10 times that. Plus, it's got VTEC. Yeah, these little four bangers are capable of pushing four figure horsepower with, you know, enough time, money, blood, sweat, tears, lost relationships, run-ins with the cops. You know, if you can forgo all that, you can hit a thousand horsepower in an Integra. And that is the reason why the Acura Integra is such a huge part of car tuning culture here in America. Another reason why you're gonna find them everywhere is because they're damn cheap. These lower trim Integras come in around 5,500 to 10,000 bucks pretty easily. All right, all right, I know a lot of you watching are probably pretty sick of how many front wheel drive cars I've mentioned. Let's bring out the last but not least rear wheel drive car on this list. We're going back to the USA for a good old classic hooligan ride, the C4 Corvette. The C4 Corvette today hits the perfect balance between affordability and performance. Depending on which year C4 Corvette you can get, you're gonna get between 300 and 400 horsepower out of the gate. That's a ton of horsepower per dollar for under 10 grand. And the beauty of the C4 Corvette is all that power is wrapped in a very lightweight shell meaning your tuner friends are gonna be blown away when you blow the doors off of them in your granddad's Corvette. Now sure, the C4 Corvette does feel pretty old now, but the good news is, is they're getting to be pretty popular among tuner culture because they're just getting so damn cheap and they're just so good for the money. So it's not too uncommon to see these things dominating the drag strip. 
or ripping around an autocross track surprisingly quickly. I mean, this is a car for under 10 grand equipped with an LS V8. Everyone knows what those two letters mean. Horsepower. Modification. Loud sounds. You just cannot go wrong with a C4 Corvette. Especially when you consider that you can find some for around 5,000 bucks. But you better hurry because these are definitely going up in price right now. And the best news is C5 Corvettes are starting to dip below that 10K mark. So expect them on our next video about track ready cars, if they do. Corvettes, Miatas, 350Zs. Every car on this list is a performance car through and through and everyone around you is gonna know it when you drive up. But what if you're looking for something a little more sleepy? Well, to round out this list, we've got a little family hatchback with a lot going on under the hood with the Mazda Speed 3. Mazda's had the same slogan for a long while, zoom zoom. And it's synonymous with everything the brand stands for. Basically, go fast and have fun. Which means even their Mazda 3 hatchback got a little bit of spice in the Mazda Speed 3. And let me just tell you why this is just a fantastic car and why we saved it for the last. First of all, the power from stock is just unreal. 263 horsepower and 280 foot-pounds of torque from the factory. That's a hell of a lot of horsepower for a dinky little hatchback. When it came out, the Mazda Speed 3 was one of the most powerful hatchbacks available in the world. But it's not just a rocket ship. This thing actually corners well as well. You see, Mazda has their usual mantra, Jinba Itai, or loosely translated, horse and rider as one. And just saying that makes me feel all zen inside. Now, like the other front-wheel drive hatchbacks on this list, the Mazda Speed 3 is going to excel on a track day with a tight track that emphasizes acceleration over top speed. Just be ready for the torque steer that you're going to get for how much power this thing is putting down. And if you can handle it, that means that you get one hell of a hot hatch. Now, we were able to find one that's a great example with low miles for just over our $10,000 mark. But if you're a little more patient than us or willing to drive something a little more beat up, you can easily find one for under the 10 grand mark. I mean, you're gonna take it to the track and thrash it anyway, right? Why get a good one? So there you have it, a bunch of track ready cars available for under 10 grand. Which car on this list was your favorite or which car did we forget? Let us know down below. And while you're down there, like the video if you liked it and like the video if you disliked it because it's just the nice thing to do. And don't forget to subscribe because we're gonna keep bringing you content like this every other day. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, keep living the ideal lifestyle. I'm that way. <laughs>